How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my review for Far Cry 6. Now I was lucky enough for Ubisoft to send me a review copy, so I've been playing the crap out of Far Cry so I could get a review out for you guys. But just as a disclaimer, I've played this game for about 45-ish hours so far, and I've still not beaten the main story. This game is just so big, and there's so much stuff to do in it, and I've taken my time, and I've gone around exploring, and done a lot of the side stuff, so I haven't really focused too much on the main story. I don't think that the main story is going to affect my overall score too much, but I'll go a little bit more into detail with that as I give my final score at the end. But as always, when it comes to reviewing video games, I always like to talk about the good things and the bad things. But to start us off, I'm going to talk about the good things first. And the first thing I want to talk about is the graphics. Now leading up to this game's launch, the past year hasn't looked very good for the advertising for Far Cry 6. If you go back and you look at some of the previous trailers and stuff and gameplay snippets, a lot of people have been complaining about the graphics. They said that it doesn't look that good. I didn't think it looked that good back when I saw the trailers. I thought the facial animations looked weird in cutscenes, and it looked like they were doing a downgrade in the graphics department. But now that I've actually sat down and played the game myself, I play it on an Xbox Series X, and I can confirm that the graphics don't look as bad as what it originally looked like in the trailers. I think the graphics actually look pretty good. At least compared to most games that I play, I think these graphics are fine. It's nothing like revolutionary, but there are a lot of fine details and it does look really pretty in certain aspects. For example, going on the beach, you can see all the lighting and the details in the water and the details in the sand and all the little pebbles. And in some parts of this game, it looks really, really good. So I don't really have any complaints in the graphics department. I was actually kind of impressed. Now I'm sure there's a lot of PC players that are probably going to pick this game apart like they always do when it comes to graphics, but just me playing on the Xbox Series X, I think it looks fine. I don't know how it's going to look or perform on the Xbox One or the PS4. I would imagine it's not going to look as good, but when it comes to graphics and performance, I haven't had any issues uh, with my Series X. I haven't noticed any problems with performance. I haven't really gotten any frame rate loss. I had a couple problems getting stuck in the loading screen and I had to restart my game, but even that wasn't a problem because of how fast the Xbox Series X restarts games. I mean, I got back into the action in no time. But overall, with the graphics and performance, I think they did a good job. Which I want to briefly talk about another point that I feel like I need to bring up, and it's the fact that I didn't experience very many bugs or glitches. In the past couple years, you know, 2020, 2021, most of the latest video games launched in a state that they're just broken, especially nowadays with all the live service games they sort of launch broken and then they just get patched later on and it just feels like every game I've played in the past couple years just has tons of bugs and glitches and I didn't experience very many bugs and glitches at all in my playthrough like I said the only problem I really experienced was a couple times I got stuck in a loading screen it would just load endlessly forever but I didn't see very many like graphical issues or any kind of game breaking bugs like I would normally experience in most games. Overall, I think it's a really well polished game. This game feels like it was in the oven for a decent amount of time. It doesn't feel rushed. And I'm actually, you know, impressed with Ubisoft's ability to, you know, make a game and it's not buggy and glitchy like most video games nowadays. So, so I had to give credit where credit is due in that regard. So next up, I want to talk about all the different weapons that are in Far Cry 6, and there is a lot of different weapons. There's a bunch of different types. I mean, you have submachine guns and shotguns and assault rifles, sniper rifles, bows, and then there's like a special kind of goofy tier weapons that a lot of people were complaining about in the trailers. There's a weapon that's like a CD player. It will shoot CDs out of people when it plays music. That There's that weapon. There's a firework launcher you know just some like goofy weapons which are actually pretty fun to use when i first saw the trailer i wasn't into the idea of having like the supremo backpack that could shoot missiles or having these like goofy looking weapons i just didn't like the idea of that but since i've actually got my hands on this game i think some of the like goofier weapons are actually some of the most fun to use now if you don't like the idea of having like a cd launcher as a weapon you just don't have to use it because there is just a huge variety of weapons if you want it to feel more realistic and you want 
want to use actual weapons, then, I mean, you're not going to be disappointed. I actually think that there's probably too many weapons in this game because a lot of the weapons kind of feel similar. You could only hold three weapons at a time. And what happened to me is like I'd find one or two good weapons and then I would just want to stick with those weapons the entire time. Uh, there was a couple times where I switched it up. I was just using different weapons just to play around with the different weapon types. And some weapon types just feel way better than other weapon types. For example, there's a bunch of automated pistols and they're just not very good. The recoil on the light machine guns is just absolutely horrible, so I just didn't like using the light machine guns, and I'm normally a light machine gun person when it comes to video games. But overall, the weapons, I mean, they feel pretty good. I don't really have too many complaints with the weapons. There is a lot of customization options for the weapons, like you can put different attachments on them, different mods and stuff, which is something that wasn't in previous Far Cry games. So I like the fact that you can really go into detail with how you want to customize your weapons. I personally just put silencers on pretty much every weapon I had because I like to be stealthy in this game. But overall, I like a lot of the different weapons. If you guys are a fan of Far Cry or just first person shooters, I mean, there's a huge variety of weapons to choose from in this game. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. So next up, I want to talk about all the different customization options that are in this game. And there's actually a lot of customization options. You can change the color and the interior of a lot of vehicles, which impressed me. You can change the appearance of pretty much all the weapons. You can put weapons and charms on your guns. Uh, you can change your clothing items. Now this game doesn't have a skill tree or perks like previous Far Cry games. This game actually ties a lot of your stats and your abilities to your clothing items, which I don't think I'm a fan of that. I think I would rather personally have like a perk tree because in this game you, you're kind of forced to like mix and match clothing items. If you want to have a certain ability like being able to swim faster, then you have to put on a certain pair of pants or if if you want to take less damage, you'll have to wear a different helmet. So you have to like go through and find basically what the best armor is, and that determines your perks. So I'm not too big of a fan of that. But this game does have a transmog system for the clothes. So if you go through and you find all the different clothing items that have the best stats, you can change the way they look to any other clothing item that you already own. So if I have a hat that just is really ugly, but it has really good stats, I can change the look of that hat to look a lot cooler if I want to. So there is a lot of customization options and I do appreciate that. I like the fact that you can change the color of all your weapons. I do like the fact that you can change the look of most of your vehicles, your weapons, and your clothes. So I do like the customization options. So next up I want to talk about all the different things that you can do in this game. Now I said that I've been playing this game for like 45 to 50 some hours and I've not beaten the full story yet. So what have I been doing this whole time? Well there is a a lot of stuff to do. The map in this game is absolutely ginormous. It is huge. I think the map in this game just is easily way bigger than Grand Theft Auto 5's map. And there's just tons of stuff to do. There's a bunch of different like checkpoints that you can capture. Basically, there's a huge military presence all over the entire map. There's different checkpoints and military bases and strongholds and all these different things throughout the map that you can capture. And then once you capture those, your allies will take it over and then it will become a fast travel point for you. So I've just been going around pretty much clearing out the entire map, killing most of the enemies, taking over all the bases and the checkpoints and stuff. Uh, I've been doing a lot of side missions. I mean, there's a crap ton of side missions you can do in this game. You get three different headquarters throughout this map, which you can upgrade. So you have to go around and farm a bunch of resources as you play, and then you spend those resources on different upgrades for your base, which then in return will give you different perks like, you know, know, better weapons that you can get, better armor that you can unlock. So you can spend your time upgrading your bases. There's a bunch of mini games you can play, which some of them are actually pretty fun. They have cockfighting, which you can do for money. They actually spent the time to design a Tekken themed cockfighting game where you can choose different chickens and have them fight other chickens. And then as you explore out in the environment, you can unlock different chicken characters. And it's actually pretty fun. It was kind of entertaining and I was impressed with how much detail they put into that mini game. So I thought that was pretty cool. There's dominoes you can play. There's a bunch of like special op kind of missions that you can do as sort of like a mini game. And not to mention you can do all of this in co-op. So if you have a friend and you want to play like side missions or just free roam or any of the like special op missions, you can do all that with co-op, which is really cool too. And there's just a crap ton of stuff to do in this game. I think this is a good game to, you know, pass the time, explore around, check out the environment.
environment and and it just has a lot of stuff to do so it'll definitely keep you busy for quite some time so next up i want to talk about some of the problems that i had with the game there's not too many overall problems but some of them kind of bugged me there's sort of small things the first problem kind of goes along with the whole you know there's a lot of things to do because some of the things that there are to do kind of feel like fluff material it feels like some of the stuff they added in just felt kind of tacked on like they just wanted more for the player to do so they just added some extra stuff in for example there's a lot of roadblocks all throughout the map sort of like checkpoint areas and they're just not really that much fun to take on they're okay the first couple hours that you play the game like as you're starting to learn the ropes and find good weapons and stuff but towards the later end of the game the checkpoints just aren't very fun to take over at all. I personally had a lot more fun capturing like big bases or just big areas that have a strong military presence. Going around and taking all the small like roadblock checkpoint areas just isn't fun because sometimes there's like three enemies guarding the checkpoint. So you show up to the checkpoint, pow, 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 get three headshots, and then you capture the entire checkpoint. It just kind of feels like it's a waste of time, and they're just not that fun. So so there's definitely a lot of stuff to do in this game. It's just some of it doesn't feel very necessary. So I can definitely tell that there's a little bit of like fluff material that they put into the game. Uh, and then another problem I have, it's not that big of a problem, but it's kind of just like a pet peeve. You can't turn on your flashlight there's a lot of areas in this game, like dark caves, uh, even at nighttime, you know, it's pretty dark at nighttime, and you don't have an option to turn on your flashlight. At least there's no option that I was able to find. There's some parts of the games that are kind of scripted where you have to go into caves or whatever, and your flashlight will turn on for you. But there's a lot of times where you're playing around in this environment and you can't see almost anything because it's so dark. So I wish that there was a way to turn on a flashlight. And if you guys play this game for yourselves, you'll probably also have that complaint. Like, I couldn't tell you how many times I was wandering around in a dark cave or just trying to do some sort of like infiltration mission and trying to be stealthy and I couldn't see anything because it was so dark. So I wish that you could turn on a flashlight. Another pet peeve I have with this game is just the vast amount of materials you have to gather for pretty much everything. Throughout this entire game, there are materials scattered everywhere. Tons of chests, uh, tons of different scrap metals and gasoline and metal and wire and just tons of stuff that you have to pick up off the ground. Basically just going around gathering loot, except the loot doesn't feel very rewarding. You use a lot of these materials to upgrade your base, and you have to use all these materials to upgrade all your weapons and add weapon parts and weapon mods and stuff. But you have to do it so much, it kind of gets tedious, and it's kind of annoying with just how much resources you have to go around picking up off the ground. I liked it better in previous Far Cry games when you didn't have to do that. Especially in the later part of the game once you start to get everything unlocked and you don't really need the resources anymore because you have most of the upgrades that you want. It just kind of gets tedious. I got to the point where I just stopped picking up items because it just wasn't worth the time for me anymore. So it can get a little old going around just basically farming resources to upgrade some of your weapons. And then another problem I have with the game is that there's not enough of the main villain. Anton Castillo is the main villain, and he is really cool. Like, I really like him as a villain. The actor is amazing. I mean, he's in Breaking Bad. He's in Mandalorian. I mean, he's just a great overall villain. And so far, what I've played of the main story, I love him. I love him in all his cutscenes. He seems like just a complete evil dude. I really enjoy his character. One of the problems I've had so far, I mean, I've played the game for like 45 to 50 hours. They should have incorporated him in more of the side missions or just more random cutscenes where he pops up because it feels like unless I'm just focused mainly 100% on the main story missions, I don't see him that much. And even when I am doing a lot of the story missions, like you can go like four or five like main story missions before you even get a glimpse of him. 
So based off of what I played so far, like I said, I've not beaten the main story yet. I think he's a great villain. I just haven't seen enough of him. So they definitely should have implemented him way more than what they did. If I can play the game for 45 to 50 hours and I only see him a handful of times, then they didn't do a very good job of, you know, showing off their main villain. Which is bringing me to my final verdict of the game. Based off of everything I've played so far, I think the game's a lot of fun. If you guys like previous Far Cry titles, I think you guys will like this as well. I don't have too many gripes with it. I mean, like I said, there's a little bit of fluff material there. There is a lot of things to do. But if you don't care about 100% completing the game, it's not that big of a problem. Based off of what I've played so far, I'm looking at like an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed the game. I think it's a pretty good experience. Now, like I said, I've not played the whole story. But that's ultimately not going to change my opinion on the game too much. If I finish beating the game and the story ends up being like phenomenal, I'd probably give this game like a 9 out of 10. That's how much I enjoyed this game. But if I finish the game and the story ends up being absolute crap, that's still not going to hurt the score overall that much. And I'd probably give it like a 7. But as of this video, based off of everything of what I've played for about 45 to 50 hours, I'm looking at about an 8 out of 10, and I think you guys are probably going to enjoy it, especially in the year 2021, when there's just not that many video games, everything keeps getting delayed. This is definitely one of the best games I've played this year, uh, so I'd say going into fall, if you guys are looking to pick up a game for Christmas or something, or if you just want a single player game, I recommend it. I think it's a good buy. It's definitely one of my more favorite Far Cry games. And uh, yeah, I think you guys will probably enjoy it as well. But those are some of my thoughts on Far Cry 6. I couldn't go into detail about absolutely everything because this would be like an hour long video. I just wanted to give you guys my like initial thoughts on the game. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Are you guys planning on getting Far Cry 6? If you are or aren't, let me know your reasons why. And then if you guys want to join the channel's Discord, that is linked down in the description down below. And if you guys want to follow me on Twitch, I stream there pretty often at Swan plays games live and that is going to do it for me everyone and I will talk to you all in the next video